Good morning. Welcome to Victoria's Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying the subject, the law of spiritual authority. We are now in week 17. We've been teaching on this now for four months. It is so important. As I've said many times, I think this is probably the least known and the least understood spiritual law of all the spiritual laws. And yet it is so vitally important that it, The lack of knowledge about our authority is one of the main reasons why Christians get hurt. Why Christians are hurt and even killed in dangerous situations, in bad situations, because of lack of knowledge of their own spiritual authority to rule over it. And because they fail to rule over it, It rules over them and they get hurt by it. So we must learn our spiritual authority and the jurisdiction of our authority. And what is jurisdiction? That is the territory that we have authority to rule over. Where do we have authority to rule? What do we rule over? And so we began studying our jurisdiction a couple weeks ago and we first looked at our authority to rule over the animals. And if you missed that, that was two weeks ago. You can go to my website at www.victoriousfaith. That is V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S faith, F-A-I-T-H dot C-O and go to the radio broadcast archives. You can listen to all these radio broadcasts back to the very, very beginning. And I encourage you to do that, to get caught up, get the foundation laid in the word of God so that you can rule and reign in your life. Remember, we talked about this a few weeks ago. God, we are in a place and position right now that we are in training for reigning. We are in training for reigning because we are called and created to rule and reign with Christ. And right now we are to be ruling and reigning in the earth, on the earth, especially and primarily in our own lives. And so we talked about having authority to rule over the animals. And then last week we started talking about the authority that we have to rule over the earth. And we read in Genesis 126, and God said, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. And so we see that there are four things. I mean, there are five things that God named. Four of them are animals. Different kinds of animals. But the fifth one, God said, over all the earth. The earth. Now, what does that mean? That means the elements of the earth. That is wind, water, fire, dirt, minerals, and things in the earth or in the ground. And vegetation, all kinds of plants. And so we have also seen That Jesus is our example. He came to earth. And as we read and studied carefully. In Philippians chapter 2. Verses 6 through 8. That though he was deity. He did not consider equality with God. Something to grasp, cling to or hold to. But verse 7. Says he emptied himself. And taking on the very likeness of a servant and the fashion or form or likeness of man. And when it said he emptied himself, that word means to take away the effectiveness or the power of something. To make invalid and to take away the prerogatives of status or position or rights. It means to dispossess. It means to be stripped 
of all things and cause to lose power or deprive of power, make of no effect, deprive of force. And so Jesus, and actually a very accurate word there, one of the definitions is to divest. And one of the translations of Philippians 2.7 in the Murdoch translation, it uses the word divested. Yet he divested himself and assumed the likeness of a servant. And to divest means to strip or deprive someone of status, power, rights, or property. And so Jesus divested himself. He made it, he emptied himself and divested himself of his rights and privileges and power as deity, as God. And he became in the likeness of a man, of a servant. And so he came to earth and lived like a man. He did no miracles until after he was baptized in the Jordan River when the Holy Spirit came down upon him like a dove. But at that point, he received the Holy Spirit in and upon his life. And then he began doing miracles. And the first miracle was in Cana in Galilee at the wedding. John chapter 2. And verse 11 says, this was the first miracle. So if you ever hear anybody say that Jesus did miracles when he was a child, maybe he prayed for the bunny rabbits or the birds. Wrong, wrong, wrong. That is all fiction. The Bible says differently. The scripture says that the wedding at Cana, where he turned the water into wine, that was the very first miracle that he performed. So if the Bible says it was the first miracle, then it was the first miracle. He never had performed any miracles until that time when after he had received the the Holy Spirit upon his life. And it was by the power of the Holy Spirit that he did miracles. And we see that also in Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, when Peter went to Cornelius house and Peter preached to the Gentiles in Cornelius house. He talked about in verses 37 and 38 acts chapter 10, 37 and 38. He said, you know what has happened throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. That was when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan river in Galilee after the baptism of Jesus. So he said, let me read it again. You know what has happened throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism, beginning in Galilee after the baptism. So when did his ministry begin? When did miracles begin? After his baptism. That John preached, verse 38 says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus had to be anointed with the Holy Spirit in order to do miracles. But so are you and I anointed with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit And power. And how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Because God was with him. So you see it says God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power. The anointing came upon Jesus. Just like the anointing of the Holy Spirit can come upon you. Even Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4 and verses 18 and 19, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me 
because he has anointed me. So you see there again, we see Acts 10 38. We see Luke 4 18. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit in power. In other words, it was the Holy Spirit in power coming upon him, upon him. Well, go back to Acts chapter two. No, Acts chapter one. I mean, Acts chapter one, chapter one, verse eight. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Did Jesus say that? Yes, he did. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So you see, Jesus received the Holy Spirit coming upon him as a man, as a man, as a natural human being. The Holy Spirit came on him as a man. But then he said, the Holy Spirit will come upon us as well. So I want you to see Jesus did miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon him as a man. He came as our example to show us what to do and how to do it. What to do. And how to do it. So Jesus showed us how he took authority and what he took authority over. And so we're looking at Jesus and the ministry of Jesus. And what things did he take authority over? He did it as our example. He never once said Now, don't you try this. He never said that. Quite the opposite, quite the contrary. He commanded his disciples to go do what he did. He commanded them to go out and heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers. That was in Matthew 10, 8. And he commanded us the same thing in Mark 16. And I'm, again, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I'm wanting you to see Jesus was our example, doing what we are supposed to do, showing us what to do and how to do it. So we see that Jesus in Mark chapter four, verses 35 to 41, Jesus calmed the wind and the waves. And it was a furious squall or a great tempest. The Greek word there means of hurricane force, a great storm of hurricane force force and Jesus commanded peace be still. I shared last week with my, about my own testimony and experience in the South Pacific islands in Vanuatu being out in a small boat in the middle of a channel when there was a hurricane passing by on the outer side of the islands and the waves became so big. It began to almost capsize our little boat and out of my spirit came the command and I commanded the wor- the waves to be still. And immediately those waves were calmed and we went across the channel on small waves or small, bumpy, rolly, rocking waves that just gently rocked the boat. But the great waves were calmed. They were put down. Because of authority. And so we see that we have authority over the wind, rain, water, dirt, wildfire, hail, minerals and things in the earth, and vegetation and all kinds of plants. And so we have authority over the weather. Now, as I mentioned before, there are Christians who think that we can do nothing about the weather and they think that God is totally in control of the weather. That is absolutely not true. God is not in control of the weather. Now he can affect the weather through our prayers, 
but he is not in control of the weather because the weather is part of creation. And therefore, it came under the curse when Adam sinned and the whole earth was cursed and everything in it, including the weather. The weather came under the curse as part of creation. So as part of creation, it is also under our authority now as when we are born again, we are redeemed from the curse and we are reinvested with authority to rule over the earth and to exercise our, our authority over the weather. Now, I began giving you some points to explain this authority over the weather because we don't want you to go out and get, you know, misuse it, misunderstand it, get yourself hurt or get um, disappointed, not understanding the way it works. So I'm explaining it to you carefully. Number one point you must understand. You cannot always take authority alone over weather that affects other people. But you can take authority over what affects you directly and personally. And your immediate family and your personal property, all that belongs to you, and even people that are on your property. So you can take authority over what affects you, but not necessarily over what affects somebody else. And that includes tornadoes, hurricanes, hailstorms, damaging storms, even wildfire. That's not weather, but it's in the earth. It's the elements of the earth. You can take authority over it, commanding it in the name of Jesus to not come on your property, to not come on your property, to hurt nothing, to damage nothing that belongs to you. And I've shared, I've heard this, I've grown up with this teaching. I've understood this now for decades. And I've, over the decades, have heard, I cannot even count how many testimonies of people who have learned this and exercised it. They've done it and they've seen the results. I shared last uh, time about someone who was in a wildfire area and they commanded the fire to not come on their property. And the wildfire went all around their property, even to the border of their property, but not coming on their property. They showed a photograph from an aerial view of their property, the acres that they had, and it was burned and charred all around their property, but their property was not touched. I also shared last time about a man of God in Branson, Missouri, who, when the tornadoes passed through there, and it passed through even neighborhoods and residential areas, he told his wife, get the children, go to a safe place in the house. He stepped outside. He went outside on the deck looking directly at the tornado that he saw coming toward him. And he pointed his finger at it and he commanded it and he shouted at it, commanding, you are not coming on this property in Jesus' name. You will not touch my property or anything on my property in Jesus' name. You will hurt nothing that belongs to me. Not even a shingle of this house will be damaged in Jesus' name. Well, after the tornado passed by, it had gone through their neighborhood. Everybody gathered out in the street in the neighborhood, trying to account for everybody, make sure nobody was missing. One of the neighbor men pointed at his house and said, hey, not even a shingle is missing on your roof. There's nothing damaged on your house. Well, he had specifically said not even a shingle. And his authority worked. He was able to use that opportunity to witness to the whole group out there in the middle of the street. And tell them about Jesus Christ and the authority that we have in Jesus. 
because he ruled over that tornado. Every other house in that neighborhood was damaged, except his, not even a scratch, not even a shingle. And there are so many other testimonies of the same kind, people going through tornadoes, through hurricanes, through um, wildfires, through hailstorms, through floods, a flood coming up where they commanded it will not go over my doorstep. This flood shall not rise above my doorstep. And they were right in the flood area. And the flood went around them and did not go over their doorstep. It went around. It stayed down. A flood. I've heard that testimony more than once too. Where a flood swept all around them, but where they commanded it not to go above the doorstep, it didn't go above the doorstep. The waters stayed below the doorstep around that property alone and then flooded all the houses and buildings all around. But not that one because the person living there knew their authority and commanded it. You shall not rise above this doorstep in Jesus name. You have that authority. You need to exercise that authority. You cannot command it to not affect somebody else, but you can command it not to affect you. It's not that you can always command a storm to stop and to cease, but you can command it to not touch your stuff, not damage your property. And so um, even like I, I was taking you to the book of Acts, where in Acts chapter 27, Paul got shipwrecked. He was in the middle of a storm. Now, first of all, I shared how, the Holy Spirit had prompted me and spoke to me in Vanuatu that we should leave the day before. But I yielded to the assistant principal who said, let's stay. But we got in the storm the next day. So we didn't stop the storm, but we stopped our lives from being hurt. In the storm. And the same with Paul in Acts chapter 27. He had even warned the centurion and the captain that they should not sail. Let me read it to you. In um, Acts 27 9, much time had been lost and sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was after the fast. So Paul warned them, man, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. Verse 11, but the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and the owner of the ship and they decided to sail on. So you see, they were warned. Now we're going to talk about protection in some of the later broadcasts. But I want you to see right now, one of the greatest keys to your protection is being led by the Holy Spirit, going when God says go and staying when God says stay. God spoke to me and said we should go the day earlier. God spoke to Paul and said they should stay. You see, those kind of things will keep you out of the storm out of the trouble. If you go when God says go, stay when God says stay. Now I talked a lot about this. We did a four week series called how to be led by the Holy Spirit. It's on the radio broadcast archives and you need to go back and listen. That is so vitally important for your protection. Your protection is largely associated to you being led by the spirit and going when God says go and staying when God says stay. And if you disobey or don't hear and ignore and go on, that's when you can get in harm, in danger. But even though they didn't, Paul did not stop the storm, but God protected his life. And he said in Acts 27, That he said, I urge you to keep up your courage, verse 22, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of the God whose I am and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage. So you see, 
He said, I have faith in God. His faith protected him and protected the lives of those with him. So you cannot always stop the storm, but you can stop it from damaging you and your property and your family. Now you can agree with others who are praying over their property and you can agree in faith with them and exercise authority in agreement with them, but you often cannot do it for them without their agreement, without their prayers. Now, in order to take authority over weather in an area or a region, it will take a group of people praying and agreeing together. For example, in your church, your church congregation praying together over the weather in your area as a group, you can take authority even to change the weather. You cannot alone change the weather, but as a group, you can even change the weather in your area. So if there are dangerous storms, you can as a group command the storm to dissolve or go another way direction, or you can, if there's a drought, you can call for rain to come during drought as a group. There is agreement in faith as a group. You can exercise authority over weather in your area. Well, we're out of time. Join us again tomorrow. Remember God loves you. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.